What's going on YouTube? It is Black Shot back at another video for you guys today. So I was requested to check out this video. It's called Top 10 Types of Horror Movie Victims. I could think of quite a few, but we're not going to get into that right now. So we're just going to go ahead and check out this video. This is from WatchMojo.com. So I'll leave the original link in the description. If you want to check this out as well as their channel. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into it, all right? In about a three, two, one. We weren't doing anything. We were just messing up. Oh, shit. Pardon me, but is that a giant bullseye on your back? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie victim types. Oh, he got all that. Oh, I, I was hurt by that one. Before we begin, Johnny we Depp. publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most popular and prevalent character archetypes found within the horror movie genre. Right. These characters don't always have to die, but they often suffer the wrath of each film's main villain as intended victims or targets. Hey! A new beginning. Oh, and given Damn. the fact that we'll definitely be revealing Damn. some major death Damn. scenes along the way, the Damn. spoiler alert is now in effect. Right. Talk about? Number 10. The non-believers. I never heard there of this one. There are no Sasquatches. There are no big feet. We start our it's list with right what's perhaps Ooh, that the was most my movie. frustrating victim type of ghosts. all. The non-believers. These are the characters that simply refuse to acknowledge any of the creepy, suspicious, or downright terrifying things that happen to be going on around them in the film. There's no such thing. That was my ghosts. movie. Even though it scared the, the shit out of me. The non-believers often arrive armed with an explanation for just oh, about shit. everything until it's too late. Damn! These characters are usually separated from the main group Damn. or otherwise refuse to do anything about the killer and they uh, end up becoming mincemeat for okay. their troubles. Hey guys, you were warned. I'm trying to come in! There's nothing out here! Number nine, the redneck. He looks like he's gonna walk it off. He's gonna be fine. <sighs> Not every horror film has a redneck-like character in it, but when they do, they're often in cahoots with the killers rather than the victims. Ah, Ew. Oh, that's good, isn't it, Grandpa? Yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> they do oh. sometimes appear on the other end of things, though, disgusting. like the tragically doomed Jake and Bobby Joe from Sam Raimi's Evil Dead 2. I can't breathe! In this sense, the redneck is usually hard-headed and stubborn, and it's these qualities that often prevent this victim type from surviving oh. to the end. Do you find it impossible to compromise or collaborate with others in even the direst of situations? Then you just might be Damn. the redneck in a horror film. Yep, he's dead. Happy Mother's Day. Number eight, the fat one. Rule number one for surviving zombie land, cardio. Okay, we know it may not be PC to use this term, but political correctness was never exactly the Ugh. calling card of 1980s slasher movies. But I think you're really out of line. This was where the character archetype of the oh. fat one was often found, usually as the butt of a joke or as some sort of comic relief. <sighs> Poor fat bastard. Then again, there are also examples like Shelly from Friday the 13th Part 3, a lovable but socially awkward sort who uses cheap scares and masks to hide his self-consciousness. Would you be yourself if you look like this? Shelly was one of the franchise's most memorable. I don't remember this. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this shit. Yet That's even disgusting. That fact didn't save him from dying at the hands of Jason Voorhees. Nice makeup job. <laughs> Damn, he did that shit so much Number she don't even realize he really the died. Love interest or the best that was friend. good. I'll tell you what, why yep, don't you guys scream. go to my parents' room? You know, you guys can talk. Whatever. Every horror hero needs some backup, right? Well, this is where the love interest or best friend characters come in as moral support to the film's primary protagonist. These peripheral characters could be romantically involved with or in a platonic relationship with the main character, and sometimes they even serve as one of the few survivors of a maniacal killer's attack. I'm so sorry I almost shot you. I probably wouldn't have. Unfortunately, the love interest or best that friend is so, also like, just as likely like to end up a victim, usually as a result of some too. courageous or heroic final stand, so that the hero can attain the upper run. hand over the killer. Oh, shit. Rest in peace, guys. They couldn't have done it without you. Are you all right? Damn, look at his leg. Come on, let's just go. Number six, the stoner. Never oh. heard of this one. Oh, never mind. None of I get us it. You might be able to identify with the stone. Look at all, Thor. Isn't there a small part of us that would just want to say, screw it? I'm getting as high as possible before I have to deal with this maniac stalking me. Giant evil gods. 
Okay, maybe that isn't the best of ideas now that we say it out loud, that but that hasn't stopped actually. the yep. stoner from puffing away in countless horror movies. Sadly, this is usually the last thing they do before falling under the killer's blade. One last bit of escapism before it all fades to black. Give me my ball back, bitch! This movie was so dumb but funny at the same time. Oh, shit. Much like the usually none too bright stoner, the idiot is another victim type that's dead meat right from the start. Of course. She just gonna stand there. Damn! Number five, the authority figure. I said I know who it is. Well, who oh. is it? It's Jason Voorhees. Existing alongside the non-believers as some of the horror world's most infuriating Halloween? characters, the authority figure does all they can to impede the progress of the heroes. They could align themselves with another victim type, the useless cop, and temporarily imprison the heroes while the rest of the town gets cut up. Or the authority figure could find other ways to abuse their power to get in the other character's way. No mm -hmm. one in Forest Green wants to be reminded of what that maniac did here. That's why we changed the name. Although this victim type often sees the error of their ways before the film's end, this usually isn't enough to save them from death. Damn. Although the authority figure occasionally receives a nice scene of redemption before biting the dust. Well. Number four, the jock or the jerk. Of course. But they kind of deserve it though. You love to hate them, these jocks and jerks of the horror movie universe. This character type is usually attached to one of the film's main characters as some sort of dysfunctional love interest, but this situation rarely lasts the entire film. Not this is his top the jock off, literally. Or jerk is such an insufferable character, picking on almost everyone around them and alienating themselves from the rest of the group. <laughs> this usually leads to their demise by the film. Somebody killer, just ripped his anus alone and without any friends to save them from their deadly, but just desserts. What in the hell? Oh my God. What kind Number of three, torturous the shit is that? Girl. Hello? Of course. <laughs> it might actually be unfair to label this as one gender over another, because yep, they always it, die with sex equals out. death in many classic horror films. Still, the promiscuous girl serves a twofold purpose. Of course. Not only is she there to die after her prerequisite sex scene, she's also there to provide slasher and exploitation films with their expected amount of nudity. Unfortunately, the promiscuous girl rarely, if ever, makes it to the end, further emphasizing the connection between conservative uh... 80s era values and old school horror flicks. Oh! Still, there are worse ways to go out though, right? Yep, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Number two, the black guy, who always dies first. Y'all always kill the black dude. Stop it! This one's simultaneously something of a misnomer, while at the same time remaining a statistic to this Y'all ain't had to kill that man Although like that. films like 2017's Get Out thankfully modernized some of the racial roles in horror films, right. minorities in the genre suffered for decades as victims, with very few making it to the end credits alive. Indeed. For every black protagonist, like Peter from George Romero's original Dawn of the Dead, we've had a slew of token African-American characters that are simply there to diversify the cast and increase the body count. Of they course. may not always die first, but, LL but didn't for die the black in this guy, one, death is almost certain in the world shit. of old school horror. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Well, damn. Before we reveal our top horror movie victim, here are a few dead to rights honorable mentions. Oh shit. Sorry, kid. I don't believe in fairy tales. <laughs> oh. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that was crazy. Woo! All right, and we're off. Let's go. Jesus. Number one, the final girl. Of course. Jason, mother is talking. You. The final girl is one of the most defining tropes of classic horror, especially within the slasher boom of the 1980s. The term is used to represent the pure, virginal, or otherwise wholesome main character that faces off with the killer in a climactic battle. Of course. The final girl is often aided by the love interest or best friend Damn. in the school, and is usually successful. Barring, of course, any last yep. second sequel teases by the, the filmmakers. Door. That was kind of funny though. 
but Damn. the final girl is also a character that often returns for those sequels. Although history has shown us that even these brave, resourceful women end up falling to the Freddies and the Jasons of the world eventually. Die. Do well, I did thought from the thumbnail uh, that they were gonna show Julie from Wes Craven's A New Nightmare, but they did get it right uh, pretty much head on, so. Um, Cause you know they always, especially number two, you know they always killing black men, black women, black people in general in these damn horror movies. Y'all already know that. But um, in Halloween, what was it? Resurrection with Tyra Banks and the dude from Barbershop and Buster Rhymes. Now Buster Rhymes, he didn't die. He put Michael Myers' ass. He said, "Trick or treat, motherfucker." Yeah, see some of these movies, we got a little bit of victory, and I don't think LL Cool J died in uh, what was that? I think H two O. I think that was. But um, at the end of the day. And most of the jerks and stuff, they deserve it, except for uh, the guy in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 1, because they thought he killed his girlfriend, but clearly, you know, she got killed from Freddy in her own damn dreams, but obviously they weren't going to believe that exorcist, paranormal-looking-ass shit that Freddy Krueger did to old girl, had her ass on the wall, scratching her the fuck up, full of blood every fucking way. It was disgusting. It was disturbing. Oh, my God. And especially when they sucked Johnny Depp into that little bloody portal that they did i was just so hurt by that because johnny depp when i was a young child he was like one of my crushes and i was like no oh, it was just wrong it was disturbing i didn't like it i didn't like it i didn't like it i didn't like it but um but if you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to hit the like button comment below your thoughts on this video um did they pretty much get it right i think they did mm -hmm. and let me know if there's anything i can react to for you guys next and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram and hit that notification bell so you guys can know that video up and loaded. Damn it, is it raining again? It's Black Sean. I'm out.